Yeah, I'm in the booth. Don't shoot. Don't shoot. What y'all need some proof? Introducing watch my two videos, man. racks a two week racks challenge. Ronnie Speed. Yeah, Ronnie Speed. Ronnie Speed. When I drive, I make video. And then, you know, where you were just showing all your 2500, 2500. I said, okay. All right. I said, I can get with that. Introducing the two racks a week challenge. Man, what's going on, people? Ronnie Speed coming back. Man, you know what time it is, man. About to get this two racks a week challenge. I don't have a shirt. You know, the shirt has to get washed. So, unfortunately, I'm not wearing it right now. But, uh, yeah, here we have Curtis, man. Curtis, I'm going to let you do a quick introduction. You know, let them know. Uh, which platform you drive on, how long you've been driving, and um, which city and state you are in. What's up, everybody? It's Curtis, driving in the DFW market, Dallas, Texas. Okay. Uh, primarily, I drive for Uber, and been doing it for about five and a half years. Started mm -hmm. off part-time and made the transition over to full-time about a few months ago. Okay. Yeah. Congratulations for hitting two racks, but let's, let's get straight to it, man. Let the audience know how many hours did you have to do to make $2,000? Okay. So it took me, it took me 76 hours to hit that, hit that $2,000 mark. Okay. 76 hours and 2000. Was it, <clears throat> what was the exact uh, number? Do you remember? Uh, Two thousand sixteen dollars and sixty eight cents to be exact. Okay, yeah. Well, yeah. Co well, congratulations, man. Seventy six hours. That is that is a lot of hours, man. And I'm I'm pretty sure you know family members, some friends, like man, you crazy for you know driving all those hours, man. Why are you out there doing this, man? Why are you trying to do that? Oh like, yeah. Was, uh, well, first and foremost, before we even get to that, let's um, uh, because you said that you started driving part-time yeah, you know, for five and a half years. What, what was the transition that made you want to switch to doing it full-time? So I was working, a, um, was working at a warehouse and it wasn't your typical nine to five. It was, it was a 10 hour, 10 hours in the warehouse. And we think about it, it was pretty much was 12 hours because, you know, for friends, family saying, you know, you're working all these hours driving. When you think about it, most of these jobs, you got to commute to work. Right. Then you got to be at work. Mm -hmm. But then after work, you got to commute home and some right. traffic. Yep. So that's pretty much your 12, 13 hours right there. So, you know, I was just, you know, I had that little talk with myself one day and I'm like, you know what? Let, let's try something different. Okay. Let's try something different. <clears throat> All right, nice, nice. Yeah, I I completely agree with that because you start to value your time, especially as you start to get older, you know, and all these new ways of making money. It's like, man, do I really want to be here? So uh, what was the catalyst to, to get you to even sign up for uh, Uber or I don't know if you signed up for Lyft uh, first, but who t who even taught you about it? Um. So when I moved out here to Texas about six years ago, my mom, she was doing Uber Eats. She was okay. telling me about it. So uh, this this was before Uber Eats was even a big thing. But she was telling me when I work out here at my my new warehouse job, I could do Uber on the side, just make a little extra gas money, just extra money. Mm -hmm. And I was like, OK, well, let's go ahead and check that out. I didn't even know what Uber really was like that. So I signed up for it start doing uber eats okay. i didn't even know about the passengers part it was just food delivery and it was, it was pretty cool in the beginning and then um i started noticing like i'm taking i'm taking the uh mcflurries and stuff up to the the 27th floor exactly <laughs> yep. i'm like what is this so it, it was it was real quick you know um mm -hmm. i told i told my mom like i'm just gonna stick to the warehouse job and I started watching some YouTube videos and I started noticing the passengers part. So mm -hmm. 
I got into that part time. Okay. And that, that was pretty cool. It, it was it was simple. You know, you don't got to go in a restaurant and wait for the food to be cooked. Take it, mm-hmm. take it to apartments, third floor. You just go pick somebody up, take them from point A to point B. Okay. Yep. Yeah. I, trust me, I got experience with the with the deliveries. That's exactly why I stopped doing it. Just for the same reason, man. Like you get two cookies, a McFlurry, and a McChicken, <laughs> and you know now you got to take it up to the thirtieth floor. Hopefully, it's parking. Uh, at least in my area, like parking was scarce, so you have to double park. And I remember one time I got a ticket for double parking. I'm like, man, it's mm-hmm. not even worth it just for all the time that you have to spend waiting, then uh, going upstairs. Then some people, they get angry because they don't, you know, uh, they don't want to leave their apartment. So I'm like, man, screw this. I'm just going to stick to the rides, man. So yeah, I, <laughs> I, could, I completely understand that. So um, you mentioned um, YouTube, like you were searching for like uh, content that involves like the passengers. Like what exactly uh, did you type in? So I start typing in, this is when I was starting to, I wasn't really feeling the whole working Mm -hmm. every day in in, in the warehouse. It it was depressing. You, Mm -hmm. You go to work, the sun ain't even come up yet. You get off work, the sun already down. So I said, there got there gotta be something else. So okay. I got I went on YouTube and I would always type this in. How much can you make doing Uber and Lyft? And I came across um these YouTube, uh, these you know, content makers. I'm not gonna give any names out like that. Um, but they they give you these numbers and it it's clickbait. Obviously it was clickbait. Um, they tell you, you can make this much money, but they're not really getting into that detail of it. And I came across your channel and you pretty much had it laid out. You getting up at four o'clock in the morning and there's a video where you, you saying, Hey, hey Siri, what time is it? And your phone started telling you it's 5 30 a.m. in the morning. Yeah. And I'm like, this guy. I'm like, yeah. And you giving the numbers out just the whole from morning to evening time, rinse and repeat. And I'm like, okay, I'm I'm gonna get on this. I'm gonna okay. get on this. Yeah, man. <clears throat> well, thank well, thanks for uh, watching my uh content. And you you are you are right, man. That's why. I, I even uh, made my channel, you know, just because for that exact reason, man, there's a lot of people out there, they come up with these clickbait titles. They really don't care. They really don't drive consistent at it. You know, maybe they'll do it for like a week or something. And it's just like the person who caught like the big fish, you know, like the big catch yeah. type of situation. But, you know, I'm out here consistently, man. And, you know, just trying to showcase what could be done. So once you was driving, um, you know, like you said, five years, then you come across the two racks a week challenge. So you start seeing other people, you know, making $2,000. What did you tell yourself? Like, once you watching this, like, damn, man, like, was it like more so of a reflection? Like, damn, man, what have I been doing? Why haven't I made $2,000? Or did you think it was full of shit or what? What was your thoughts when you first came across that? Well, no, I didn't. I didn't think you I didn't think it was full, full of shit. I was I was basing it off a of, off a of market. So, mm-hmm. you know, the first thing that came to mind is, okay, Roddy out here doing it on the West Coast. Mm-hmm. You know, the money's out there. San Francisco market, the LA market. I'm like, of course they're making that much money. But then I started realizing you interviewing people from different places, different markets, Arizona, New Orleans. There's a couple cats out here that won in Dallas. And I was like, that's where I'm at. I'm like, okay, this, this this is for real. Like, this is for real. Right, right. Yeah, man. There you go. It is for real. Like, it's not a game out here. So, <clears throat> what were some of the things that you did differently? Like, once you've seen the the two racks a week challenge, like, what behaviors did you have to change to even make you know two thousand dollars? I had to, I had to be disciplined. I had, I had to be committed. Um. I like I like getting up early to do it. I'll get up four or five o'clock in the morning, 
uh, it's just some about those the first five six hours they go by fast. Yep. The traffic ain't picked up yet. You got a lot of airport rides. Uh, your day halfway over at twelve, and so what changed with me was there would be days where I would get up at seven. I would get up at eight o'clock in the morning, and when I got up that late, I wouldn't commit to staying out the 10, 12 hours. So I noticed I'm making $1,600, $1,700 a week. I'm like, why am I not hitting that 2K? So I looked at the numbers and I said, you know what? On them days that I wake up late, I got to commit. So I get up at nine in the morning. I start at 10 in the morning. I'm going to finish at 10 PM. Mm -hmm. I, I just stuck with it. Uh, I trusted the process, got kicked off the app every day, and everything fell in place. Right. Yeah, man. And I 100% agree with you once you said it's easier to, you know, wake up early. And I always say that, you know, because <clears throat> I've experienced, you know, waking up early, waking up later, and it is a lot easier starting like around 5 or 6 in the, in the morning because the first 5, 6 hours just go by like that. And it's also better for your psychology. I mean, yeah, you yeah. could wake up at any time, man, as long as you get it done, of course. But psych for your psychology, it's a lot better to wake up early because it's it's a difference how you feel uh, within yourself and with your confidence if you're done by like 6 or 7 p.m. compared to being done 9 or 10 p.m. Because then that's when the, I think people feel like, like, damn, this is all I do. I have, you know, no life. But you may have to switch some things up, you know, maybe wake up a little bit earlier to get it done. That way you can still, you know, relax with the family or, you know, pursue yeah. other things, man. So I, I like that you uh, acknowledge, you know, that fact right there, man. Like, that's good. Yeah. That is, that's, a, that's a good feeling. Um, but yeah, what, what else did you have to, um, like, like switch up? Because I remember we had talked like a month ago, maybe like a month, yeah. a month and a half ago. And you was telling me what was the uh the highest that you had made, you know, uh the first time you reached out to me. Uh the highest before that 1726. Okay. And that was around that was around 70 hours also to do that. Mm -hmm. Um I just even though it was the same amount of hours, it was not every day was 12 hours. It right. was a nine hour day. It was a it was a seven hour day on Tuesday. It, it was a five hour day on Wednesday, and it's just like I'm still leaving meat on the bone. Right, right. Still, so you 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 got to You got to finish it out. You got to see it through. Uh, you can't you can't really give your true honest opinion on something until you saw it out all the way through. Mm -hmm. If you don't do the what you what you got seven days a week to do this. 12 hours a day you got that full 84 hours so right. it took, not many people could get up here and say they did it 84 yeah. hours um i didn't even do 84 hours i i've only did 70 some hours so there's still room for improvement for me on this whole challenge to yeah, be honest yeah. With you. yeah exactly and um you know like i always say it's a challenge like you versus you and uh was this like 76 hours or like once you made a commitment to do the two racks a week challenge, was that the most amount of hours that you worked like consistent on a consistent basis or like, was you already working, you know, somewhat similar hours before? No, that, that was actually the most, um, okay. but the, I'll tell you this though, when I was working back at the, the warehouse and mm -hmm. We work in our 50, 60 hours in one week. I don't know what it is, but that felt like more compared okay. to this. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Like like with this, it doesn't, it doesn't even feel like a job. It, it you're 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 driving, you're you're mm -hmm. connecting with people, you're you're out, you're out, you're living. And at the end of the day, you bring your money home. So yep. I can't ask for anything better. Yep. Uh, yep. 100% agree. And it's funny because <clears throat> you're right. It, it don't really feel like a job. And I know that feeling like if you had a warehouse or if you're on somebody else's time, it is depressing. And especially if you try to go back to a job, you know, 
for whatever reason, let's say something happened, you got to get a little quick job just to make some money to keep yourself uh, stable. You yeah. will, you will feel it. It's like it cr it's soul crushing because it's like, damn man, I'm on somebody else's time. I could be making way more money. Then like they complain about your performance. Now you get told, oh, you get a thirty minute lunch break. It take damn near ten minutes just for the food to be done. Five minutes <laughs> to walk to wherever yeah. or drive wherever you going. So, you know, that's not even enough, but, you know, I, I understand what you're saying. Like, it's just that feeling of autonomy. Like, it's just much better. Like, you feel free. But, yeah, you are, you know, working hard, putting in more hours. Uh, Yeah, what, what, what were people saying? Like, man, that's a lot of hours. Because if I tell them, like, yeah, I drive, like, you know, about 60. I used to do, like, 84. But, oh, my God, like, what do you, how, how do you have time to, like, you know, have fun or what about your mental health? They say stuff like that, man. Like, what are your thoughts about, you know, like mental health and uh, working like those crazy hours? How do you feel about that? It's, it's all, it's all a mindset. Everybody already used to the typical nine to five. So what, what we do, a lot of people were not familiar with it. So they're gonna, they're gonna knock it. I got, I got family telling me, well, yeah, you made this much, but look at all these hours. Yep. But Heard. what what they don't realize is, I, I promise you, when I'm out there driving, I feel like it's a day off. I'll go drive my first six hours. I'll, I'll go stop for an hour. I'll just walk around. Um, oh, let me go knock. Let me go knock some shopping out. Uh, let me go to this store. It ain't crowded in here right now. I'm, I'm just living my life. I'm enjoying it. Um. Oh, I'm in this neighborhood with my grandma over here. Let me go see my grandma real quick. Let me pop up on grandma real quick. You know, it's mm -hmm. just, so it, I, you know, people, people gonna knock it because they're not familiar with it. Um, it. It's nothing on the mental of me for this. Okay. The, the mental breakdown was being in that warehouse. Mm. I agree with that, man. Yeah. And and it is cause, because it's not only you in that warehouse, it's other people. So it's already depressing that you in there. You're like, fuck, I got to go to work. Like, But then other people feel it the same way. Then they complaining. Then it's like one person complained, then another person complained, and just spread all the way throughout the warehouse. And before you know it, your whole state of mind is messed up. And I think it's, you know, nothing more important than having, you know, a strong and positive mindset, man. And you know, working for yourself and doing this allows you to think, you know, be free, be happier. I think yeah. for most people, once they transition to this, as long as they can handle, you know, like, like the grind and the hustle, like the, like the, uh, the balance of their life is, it just it enhances because it's like, you feel free. Like you said, like you get to stop at your grandma house. You get to shop when you want to, you get to eat where you want to eat, what, whatever time you want to eat, you can take how long. And uh, it, that is, you know, a valuable uh, feeling for me. It's, it's a valuable key, you know, as far as like doing this, man. So how, how are you able to, you know, just work all these hours consistently? Like what just keeps you out there? Cause I know it's times where you're like, damn man, like, fuck, you know, I gotta get up early, then you tired, but yet you still find a way to get up and get it done. So what just keeps you going? I would, I would say um, I'm adaptable. I, I could adapt to my surroundings. Uh, for example, after this, I'm going right back out to drive. I got I to gotta knock out 10 rides this evening and knock this quest out for the week. So, okay. you know, it's, it's, it's the short-term goals that are right, and it's the long-term goals that are right. That's, that's what keeps me going overall. I, I got some plans in motion. And I want to see those through. So I tell myself every day when I wake up in the morning, hey, I, I need to do this today. I need this by the end of the week. Mm. I got this going on next month. Mm -hmm. So overall, that's what keeps me going. Uh, I always always have a plan in motion. And it just keeps me motivated. Just knowing that I'm my own boss. I'm going out there. I'm going to achieve it. I'm going to get it. Mm. I like it. Yeah. And I, and I like the fact that you said like having plans and having some type of like daily, weekly or like monthly checklist, like you need, you need that. You need some type of roadmap, some type of like vision where you see yourself. 
Because, you know, I've met plenty of people who used to drive and they be like, oh, well, like, that's all it, that's all it was. Like, driving just consumed my life or, you know, I have no life. Like, how are you able to do this? It's like, this is my life. Like, trying to, you know, reach the top, the top tier pinnacle, be successful. Only thing, I'm using this as a tool. So, like, I also think a lot of people, uh, perspective is wrong. They look at this, oh, well, I got to work. People don't like to work. But it's like, yep. you have the opportunity you know, to maximize it if you work 84 hours, which not too many people are, you know, willing to do that, which I understand why. But I think, I think if somebody signs up to do it, especially full time, you got to at least do it once. You got to at least do it once, push yourself to the limits for your own self, for your own state of mind. So you can see what you're capable of doing and, uh, you know, see what you could potentially make. Because let's say you did everything possible. It's like, okay, I set a goal out for myself. I accomplished it. I've done, I did everything possible that I could in this week. And uh, this is what I made. So it's like, now you know that you are capable of doing something like this. Like, damn, if I could do 84 hours and make $2,000, sometimes $3,000 or more, it's like, shit, what else am I capable of doing? Right. I think that's why it's so good, you know, for your mindset to try this because people are like, oh, well, that's a lot of hours. Like, you telling people that they should do this? Yeah, you should. Like, you ain't got nothing else to do. Like, grind right. it off once for yourself. Like, don't be don't be afraid of it, especially if you transition to doing this because I think most people who do this, it's something telling them, regardless if it's conscious or subconscious, that they want more out of life. Like, whatever they're doing – it's not satisfying them. It's soul crushing. Like, so they want more. They want some type of freedom, some type of control, and they want to maximize their earnings. So it's like, okay, I want to do this, but you, you got to accept everything that comes with it. If you want to truly live this life long term, then you got to put the work in. And it's just, you know, no way <laughs> to get around it. So just embrace it and figure things out uh, that you're good at and that you could you know, monetize on the, on the side, man. And you, um, I, I want to touch on something that you said too. You, you mm -hmm. said something and it, this is what stuck with me. You either going to pay for it on the front end or you going to pay for it later. Yep. So I'm going to go ahead and put the work in now yeah. so I can enjoy <laughs> later. Yeah. It's like you yeah. might as well, but like, and that's, and that's the thing, because people, like I said, they 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 afraid of it. But if you truly enjoying it, like you truly planning out your life, you know, developing like goals for yourself, it's not. It, it's fun. It's like okay, I'm achieving things. I'm seeing progress. I mean, you may not see progress, you know, right away in uh, the time frame that you think. But as long as you constantly getting better and you keep trying and you know, readapting your mindset. If something doesn't work, you you switch uh plans and try something else. It's like shit. Okay, now I'm now I'm figuring things out. Like people just expect stuff to happen like this, but yeah. you know, sometimes it takes longer than expected and it takes years. So, you know, you just gotta you gotta embrace it. And like I like I said, man, you're gonna be you fucked either way. You're gonna do it up front yeah. or you're gonna do it in the back. And I'd rather just do it up front and um let that way I could live, you know, good later on because it's it's gonna really suck later on if you're trying to really grind and you know, then you're struggling, your health is, you know, evaporating, then it's just and I think that's the worst. I'm sure you met, you know, old miserable people or that just get in your car, they just hate their job and they're just so angry. You could just see it in their face, see it in their body <laughs> language, like, damn, what's wrong with you? Yeah. Just bitter and mean. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, man. It's I don't want to be like that. So, nah. yeah. So, uh, why, why, in your opinion, why do you think people don't uh, make two thousand dollars in a week from driving? You said why they don't? Yep. Uh, people, people don't make two thousand. They don't make two thousand a week because, because of that outside noise. They mm. let that outside noise get to them. You. Especially, especially from family. Uh, yeah. I don't know. It, it's something about family. Uh, yeah, you you raised me and everything, but I I grew up to be my own person, so yeah. I want to do my own thing. Um, but you know, majority of people they fall victim to that. Mm -hmm. You listen to these doubters. You you even watch these YouTubers out here talking about 
don't don't rely on this for your full time and you just like oh yeah they they right i'm not about to do that yeah uh, exactly so that's why people don't make the 2000 um discipline and and just being lazy mm -hmm. just just being lazy uh people people don't give themselves the credit that they deserve because yep. we're we're all capable we're all capable of greatness mm -hmm. and unfortunately a lot of people out here they don't know how to unlock that greatness i, I agree with everything you said man and that, those are all you know strong and solid points man and even when i do some of the videos like the nine the corporate nine to five versus uber and lyft drivers you know oh i thought about doing this but it's always a lot of times it's people parents you know people parents mm -hmm. uh you know they direct them other ways like no nah, that's not a good job or you won't get paid from doing that but they don't understand like a lot of times they just lived in the past like you don't have to necessarily do the things that they learned when they were like your age man times are changing and things are moving faster with the advancement of you know uh technology I'm not saying like it will 100% work, but you got to at least have enough courage to attempt whatever it is that you want to attempt. That way you won't have any regret later on, but hey, I tried it. So, you know, you could pat yourself on the back. Like I had enough courage to at least attempt it and try it. And, um, you know, sure. see see what works. And, and the other part that you said, like a lot of noise as far as, especially on the internet, yeah, you're right, because people, they'll see this content and it's, and it's negative and it scares them. It scares them and it makes them feel bad. So I understand that. Like if you're seeing people on the Internet that's talking about doing ride share, they angry or, you know, they just playing a blame game. You got to, you know, be careful with who you're listening to who's not positive, and especially if most of their content is just complaining. It's like, oh, do, I, do I really want to let follow this person uh, yeah. because they're not getting the results? that I'm looking for. But um, like I brought up earlier, it's people perspective. A lot of time people, they don't look at it the right way. Let's say you got already got uh, a full-time or part-time job. So you're already making money. So forget the 2000. What if you was able to make 500 to $800 a week? You know, that's an extra 2000 through what? 3,200 a month plus already what you making. So like, you don't think you're capable of doing that. So you rather listen to this person who complained about the CEO and benefits, or you want to get out here, you know, make a, a hundred, $150 in a day, then, you know, go home. So it all depends on, you know, what you, what you looking for, man. Yeah. I'll guarantee most of these people who are complaining, they ain't, they not out here grinding. Trust me. I know for a fact. And, um, yeah. and that's just how it is, man. And it's unfortunate because it gives you know both platforms uber and lyft a bad rep i'm not saying it's perfect i'm not shilling uber and lyft but you know a lot of people are full of shit and they don't hold themselves accountable they rather play the blame game and blame the pat uh the platform for their shortcomings instead of like look man you know it's thursday i've only drove 17 hours and uh it's like so effectively you work in less than a 16 year old you know right. so why should anybody listen to you because you're not being 100 percent transparent you know so I, I like i like that a lot yeah it's just it's it's to the it's to the point where i i know what they're gonna say i know they're gonna say mm -hmm. uh and and i got i got a response for it i got a response for it so okay. oh you you putting a lot of miles on your car Okay, two k a week. Oh, you you don't you're not getting that much sleep. Okay, two k a week. Yeah, like like keep keep bringing it, and I'm keep bringing two k a week. Or or uh, what's what's another one? Um, oh, you gonna get you go you're gonna get burnt out. Like, but I'm still here, man. I'm still fighting. I'm still yeah. here. I mean, that's that. And you're right. Everything that people people's objections or pushback is stupid. You're gonna get burnt out. As if if you had a job, you won't get burnt out of that. So, <laughs> right. Oh, well, what about the miles on your car? It's a tool. I don't care. You think people who own laundry mats are complaining? Oh, well, what about the washing machine or what about the dryer? They don't care. Right. You know, they making money. And if they got to fix it, they'll just hire a mechanic. They, and it's like people come from a place of fear and scarcity. It's like, man, just fix the car. Who cares, man? I don't care about this car. I'm just trying to make some money 
And uh, if something happened to it, then I either I got to get a rental or I just, you know, get another car. I mean, while, like, I'm smart enough to to figure things out. Like yep. you said, man, people, they don't give a, they don't give themselves enough credit, man. They live their life in fear and scarcity. And I think that's a, I think that's a bad way to go, man. Yeah. Yeah, um, man. Shit. Well, before we get up out of here, you got any last work? Well, 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 actually, yeah, real quick. Yeah. Tell them about, uh, you know, the conversation we had like a month ago, man. Cause like you had reached out to me. I remember we had set up a zoom. And uh, you have yet to make two thousand uh, dollars before you know before that conversation before now. So what was it that stuck with you uh, from that time until now that you know that you made it? So first of all, I want to give you a huge shout out because what what you've done it, it, it's great. Like there's a there's a lot of people looking up to you, people ready to take that next leap, that leap of faith, and I came across your content and I was like, yep, th this confirms everything. So I, I, I did what I had to do and I transitioned to full time when the gas prices were at their highest. Okay. That's how I knew I was ready. I, I wasn't going okay. to let nothing, I wasn't going to let nothing stop me. Uh, I even remember the first week when I was full time. And unfortunately this happens to us drivers will get false claims on us. Mm -hmm. And Uber had a, they shut me down. They shut me down for six hours. They had to investigate me. So uh, everything's good now, but I just kept going. But uh, back to the original point, what stuck with me is you, you opened up this community and you told me about one of the winners out here in Dallas, uh, shout out to Craig. Mm -hmm. And I, I, I hit him up. And he told me, stick with it, trust the process. So the fact that you got this community and people looking out for one of an, one another, like I was watch, I was watching this guy interview months mm -hmm. ago when he won, and and to be able to talk to him a few weeks ago, you know, I messaged him, and he messaged me back and just told me to stick with it. That that's that's what stuck with me, you know, people people the same same mindset the same goals going want to better their lives and that that's what kept me going man that was the big difference from our last zoom meeting to today and i'm hoping you know one day i'll be able to have pass that same energy along and help somebody else in the future maybe somebody they want to take that leap of faith so yes sir thank you man I, man that means a lot Man, and sh shout out to Craig, man. Craig, he's such a cool dude, man. Cause I talk to him from time to time, man. I know he'll be the perfect guy to reach out to, and I knew he'll, you know, help you out. And you're right, you know, that's what it's about, man, helping one another out. And um, it doesn't matter, you know, where you at in the U.S., man. We all got the same mindset, the same goals, and, you know, it's like perfect synergy. Like, one thing after another, then it's just eventually going to spread, and you know, people going to become aware, like, okay, if I want to, you know, make money on the side, I could do this because I see other people doing it. They're happy. They are all saying the same thing. They all got the mindset. I want to join. I want to join them, the winning team, man. So thank yes, you, man. Sir. I, I appreciate that a lot. And before we get up out here, any last closing words or words of wisdom to encourage, you know, either the current drivers who have made $2,000 or the new drivers who's going to be seeing this you just just keep just keep pushing keep grinding um i'm not gonna lie it's gonna be uncomfortable nothing <laughs> in this world <laughs> nothing in this world ain't handed to you you gotta go out there you gotta take it you yep. gotta take it yep you gotta take it yeah you know go after it man like sign up don't be afraid to put the work in man like you may not hit on your first week you may not hit it your first month, but you know, continue to strive to hit it, continue to get better, you know, take inventory on yourself, like look at your earnings, like, okay, this was a bad day or this was a bad week. You know, don't beat yourself up too uh too much over it. You know, just get just get back out there, man. The money's here, man. Like yeah. I have had I've had weeks where I shit, 
when I made less than two thousand dollars, but I don't really complain. I'm like, oh well, you know, I didn't try my hardest. You know, it just wasn't my week. I'm up back next week, and um, that's just how it is, man. Just keep trying, don't give up, and um, watch some of these videos, watch some of these people who have made it to keep you going when uh you're in doubt and when you get discouraged. But um. Thank you, Curtis, for coming on, man. Like this was a good interview. Shout out to Dallas. I think, pretty sure I got. I got to. I got to double check. I want to. I think Dallas may have the most winners. I have to double check, so I'll let everybody know. But um, thanks once again, man. Congratulations. You know, sticking with it. You know, hitting that two K. Uh, that's what's up, man. I, pr- I appreciate you coming on, sharing this story, man. Yes, sir. Appreciate you, man. Yeah, no problem. So uh, like the video, share the video, comment below. Shout out to Dallas, Texas. I think Dallas have the most winners. So shout out to the Dallas market, the big D. And um, until next time, over and out. Holla back. Peace. Yeah, Ronnie Speed, Ronnie Speed. When I drive, I make two racks a week. Ronnie Speed. Yeah, Ronnie Speed, 60 hours, two racks a week, Ronnie Speed.